Alléluia. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For what he does. We thank him because uh, he is uh, faithful. We thank him because he's true. We thank him because he's uh, elevated. Il reçoit toute la gloire, Seigneur. Reçois la louange de nos lèvres. Reçois la louange, Seigneur, de nos mots, de notre bouche. Que la puissance des cieux s'élève pour magnifier la merveille de ton nom. The power of the heavenlies rise up to magnify the power of your name. The praise of your name, Lord Jesus. For you have been given the name that is above all name. You have been given the name that is above all name. The only name unto which all men all men can call all men can call and be saved and be healed and be delivered and be completely restored the only name that is given unto man the only name that is given unto mankind the name of Jesus Christ, I, I honor Lord God. I honor you, Lord Jesus. I honor you, Lord Jesus. For you are worthy of my praise. You are worthy of my worship. You are worthy of my adoration. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. I honor you, God. You are all. Reba, baby, baby, so de kita. Melelela, mama delela. Me me melele o sabade. Ya mama le o sama ndaliga. Pare boshi kitara pata. Zambe zambe. Yeah yeah. Lord Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for what you do. We honor you. We come before thee. Take control. Be lifted up. And all completely, entirely, and completely reduced. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. We bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for all that he does. John the Baptist say, I decrease. So only you. Alleluia. Somebody say, only you, Jesus. Only you increase. The anointing in the life of John the Baptist was high and elevated. But when he saw Jesus Christ, he said, you know, you know, John the Baptist had the Holy Ghost when he were. But when did he have the Holy Ghost? In the belly. We never heard such. Until John the Baptist Nobody had received the Holy Ghost. Even the great prophet Elijah, the Holy Spirit was coming up on him, not in him. Only John the Baptist. He was not even born. And he rushed in the Holy Ghost. But when he saw the master, when he saw the shepherd, when he saw the lead, 
He said, I, I do I, I do not, I'm not about to glorify myself because all I need is a touch from you. So this is the one. The lamb that thicket away all sins. Let me tell you something. It is God who appoints over you kings, leaders, shepherds, pastors. It is God who appoints over his people. It is God who appoints over his elects. He is not man. King Saul was appointed over the children of Israel. Even in his decay, he remained king. The kingdom authority and principle helps you penetrate the things of the mystery of God to reveal and unveil them. The word of the Lord God gave me. Today the word comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to branch it with Jeremiah chapter 3. The perfecting of the saints. The perfecting of the saints. If you will, really, you please with me take your Bible in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. We have our focus on verse 12, but we're going to read from verse 1. Hallelujah. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, from the King James Version. We're going to read from verse 1. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's read. Let's go. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Beseech you that he walk worthy of the vocation wherewith he are called. Beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. Continue. With all lowliness and meekness, mm -hmm. with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, mm -hmm. endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Mm -hmm. There is one body and one spirit. There is one body, body and one spirit. spirit. Somebody said there is one body. There is one. There body. is one spirit. Even as he are called in one hope of your calling. Even as you are called in one hope of your calling. I'm going to break it down later, but let's continue. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. One God. One God. And Father of all. And Father of all. Who is above all. Is above all. And through all. And through all. And in you all. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ God? You know what I'm asking the question? Because he is. Some people don't think he is. Some churches don't believe he is. Some say he's just a prophet. Some say he's just an angel. But if Christ is God, and there is only one God, and father of all. You see, when Christ came on earth, the Bible said he took a form. Hallelujah. You got to make a difference. Taking the form of is not you. 
Are you what I'm saying? If I take a form, it's like a, a I will break it down better. Transgender. They take a form of a woman, but they are not women. So it took a form of a man, but he's not a man. There was one sacrifice that was required. And all sacrifices that were given in the whole testament they could not achieve the purpose of salvation. So the one sacrifice that was required by the blood. Who in this earth had a pure blood? Not even Moses. <laughs> we all know. Even Enoch who walked with God and was no more because God took him did not have a pure blood. Even Abel, hallelujah, that Cain has killed did not have a pure blood. So it took a form but it is not that form. You see, he was a baby, but he's not a baby. You get it? If you're stuck in the time where he was baby, you will miss it. <laughs> if you're stuck in the time when he was 12 years old, you will miss it. If you stuck in a time when he was the son of man, you will miss it. As he came, he unveiled himself. Little by little. He told to his disciples, he said, I have many things to tell you, but now you cannot bear it. Let's go back to the word. So, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. If God is in you, and then also money and lie and adultery, can that work together? If God is in you, and sin and deceit, can that work together? The perfecting of the saints, that's the message of today. You were, the Bible said we were once, what? Are you a sinner? <laughs> you, got, you got to, you know, some preacher will say, I am a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner saved by grace. For the word of God says, you are called what? Saint is not when you're dead and then we canonize you in the book somewhere and then we say, now you are recognized. Say, uh, 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 uh. Because the people whom Paul was writing, the people whom Paul was writing, they were not dead. <laughs> they were alive. And he was calling them the, the. When you don't know your identity, you act like a slave. You get me? But when you know you are the child of God and you are a peculiar people, and you are a royal priesthood. You don't act like a slave. Listen. If somebody comes to you and say, give me money. And you broke. Tell me, what, what are we going what, what what, what, what to give him? But if you don't have money in your hand. But you have heard that there was given unto you a testament from your father. Who was the prime minister of England? He. But you were somewhere down there in Asia, and you have no idea that your father was a prime minister of Asia, uh, of England. And they come to you and they give you the testament. They say, "This is the testament of your father who passed away." But before he went, he put everything in your name, brother. Even if you broke in the reality. By the time you hear that the testament is about you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Are you what I'm saying? 
By the time you hear that the testament that was given is about you, is that there was written for you, you will have two things. Either you consider it and you'll be elevated, or you discard it and you will go down. But you can tell, I shall not go down. I shall not go down. Verse 7. But, but unto everyone. But unto everyone of who? Of us. Of who? Us. Who is us? Me. Uh -huh. But unto everyone of us is what? Given. Given grace. What? Grace. What? Grace. According to? To the measure of the gift of Christ. Mama, mama, mama. You see, the problem in the church is that people have problems submitting to people. But the word of God says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, submit to one another. But people be like, who do you think you are? <laughs> are you know what I'm saying? And because of that spirit, I call it the spirit of Korah. The Bible said Korah was himself a prophet, a leader. He was a chief among the children of Israel. He looked upon Moses. He said, ah, is that only you God can talk to? <laughs> For I am myself a Levite like you are. I am myself a hearer of God like you are. So why will God choose you to lead me when actually I can hear God to lead me myself? <laughs> Jesus. The perfecting of the saints. We're getting there. Tell somebody we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 8. Verse 8. Uh -huh. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Uh -huh. Now, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. Above all? Heavens. Above all? Heavens. When I tell you that God is above heaven, people think that the God is in heaven. You see, heaven is an abode, but God made the heaven. Here, let me explain. The Bible talks about how many heavens? Three, right? The first one is what? The entire universe. When you are here, you can't even see Saturn. And yet it is in your galaxy. You have to take a telescope to telescope your eye. So your eye will, will travel from here. And <laughs> Go there and, and look it closer. That's what it is. If you don't realize your eye travel, because your vision has to travel. Now, after you have done so, you have only gotten in the first heaven. And still, in the first heaven, people cannot discover everything. They are still searching. And then I see saying that it is too deep. First heaven. Second heaven is where? Where the devil and the spiritual forces are. When you read the book of Daniel, you see that uh, the prince of priests was in the Second heaven between the answer from God and the heaven of Daniel. So as the answer was coming, he was fighting right there. Amen? The third heaven is there. Is where? The host. We call it the host. The host comprise everything. Whether the saints, whether the uh, uh, angels who are worshipping the one who sits on the throne. So Christ Jesus 
even though he came in the form of a man, he's not our boyfriend. Hallelujah. Continue. Verse, Verse 11. 11. And he gave and um, so after he did all these things, he explained everything from verse one. He go from 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 from. He talked about that everyone has gift given unto them according to the grace that is given unto them. So he made sure that that everybody is included. And when I talk everybody, I'm talking about, about everybody saved. You know what I'm saying? So everybody is included. Okay, from the moment you save, you have a gift, you have a grace, you have something in you that God uses in order to touch somebody. That, that's how it is. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom. So to everyone it is given a grace according to the measure of Christ. But now here's the problem. The problem is that in verse 11, he says, now end. He's going to start saying something that is important. That if you don't pay attention to it, you might miss the entire reason why God is working in your life. Or God is placing you in places. Let's let's continue. Getting there. And and he gave some. And he gave some apostles. Who he gave how many? Some. Now you see, he gave to everybody the grace and the gift. I didn't give to everybody to be apostle. He didn't give to everybody to give to be. Prophets. Prophets. He didn't give to everybody to be evangelist. Evangelist. Now, there is a difference between he gave and you call yourself. Il y a une différence entre il a donné des évangélistes et tu t'es fait évangéliste. You see, your father who who, who birthed you? Who, who, who? Do you choose him? Before you came on earth, you were living in the spirit because the Bible said that he knew us before we were in the mother womb. But the knowledge of the things that you had, you have none of them in this earth because they are all sealed. The things in heaven that you knew, when you were there in the spirit, I can tell you, when you come on earth, <laughs> you don't come with that. <laughs> That's why you are seeking revelation. When you die and then go back to where you belong with the Lord, you will become light. The Bible says he's called the father of lights. Anyway, so as you become in the stature of who Christ made you, that will be after. But for now, as you are on earth, you have received gift, grace, according to the measure of Christ. The stature of Christ. Meaning, it is Christ who looks at you and say, you're going to be this, you're going to be that, you're going to be this. You can tell him, Lord, I don't agree with the measure you gave me. Give me some more. He will say, hey, Calm down. Like at the 11th hour workers. They came in. They work at the 11th hour. The one who were in that a long time. They say, ah, why would you give the same amount of wage to the one who came just last? Like us who have been beat beating by the sun since the morning. He said, ah, it is my money. Hallelujah. So, and he gave some apostles. And some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in the verse 12, for what? For the perfecting of the saints. For which purpose? For the work of the ministry. Oh, Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, Lord perfect me for the work of your ministry. Now, this verse does not come just like that random. This verse has a root, a beginning, that came all the way from the Old Testament. Let's take the book of Jeremiah and we come back after to Ephesians. Jeremiah chapter 3. 
We're going to read verse 13 and 15. 13 to 15. Okay, go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 3, starting from verse 13. Mm -hmm. Only acknowledge thine iniquity mm -hmm. that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree. Mm -hmm. And he hath not obeyed my voice, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Turn. O oh, backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. Verse 15. Verse 15. And I will give you pastors. And I will give you pastors. According to my heart. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Hallelujah. Stay right there. And God is saying, I will give you shepherd leaders who will feed you with knowledge and understanding according to his heart. What it means is that until you are recognizing the one that God has put over you, you cannot feed from it. It's like a tree. Until you recognize that a tree is a mango tree, that fruit of the mango tree won't be any good for you. You will want mango, but you got to recognize that the tree is a mango tree. And the purpose for which God does so is that to establish over your life a perfecting into the work of your ministry. So God is establishing you in perfecting you through some people that he pulls and put in the lead to help you perfect your life and your ministry. Are you following? So you cannot choose a, a, a you cannot choose your spiritual father or you cannot choose your father. The one who gave you birth, who gave the your oh, come on, sir. biological father, even if you disagree with him. You see your father. Hallelujah. Your biological father, he shows you from where you came from. By your spiritual leader, they show you where you're going. Hallelujah. And the difference between the two the word of God says that it is God who gives them unto you for the perfecting of the ministry that is upon your life. Meaning, there is a ministry upon your life that God is expecting you to fulfill. Because to all of us, he gave grace, measure, and gift. Amen? Or, or, you, or you didn't receive any grace from God? A amen? I don't hear you. Did you receive any grace from God? Yes. Did you receive any gift from the Lord? Yes. But the point of it is that it's not for you. What you receive is for others. But for you to use them correctly, sharply, and continually, it gives you somebody else to perfect it so that you be sharpened. For iron sharpens. So I will give you pastors according to my heart, uh -huh. which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Now, put it this way. In this life, on the physical, 
When you want to learn something you don't know, what do you do? In the physical, in the realm, in, in the world, when you want to learn something you don't know, like a, a, a job, a whatever, a, a skill, what do you do? You go training. It is only in the faith that people think they can do things just like that. <laughs> Let, people, the word of God says, I will give you pastors according to my heart who shall feed you. With what? Knowledge. With knowledge understanding. and understanding. If you don't understand the knowledge that you have, how to put it in practice, you will be just standing like that. You are standing with gift. And then the gift is just making you like a belly. <laughs> you, <laughs> you ain't going anywhere. You are loaded with gift, but you are not advancing. Not all pastors, teachers, shepherds are supposed to be great. No, a leader pulls out of you the greatness. Some teachers are broke. They want to go to school. But they teach other people who become president. When you don't recognize who God has placed you under, you are barren. Because he said, I will give you. Not you will choose for yourself. Those who choose for themselves, the Bible calls them, they are lost. For the word of God said that in the last days, some will what? Choose for themselves. Pastors. Preachers. Are you following what I'm saying? I do not want to choose for myself. I, tell to somebody, you should not choose for yourself. <laughs> You should not do that. Because if God say you're going to be under a wicked king, even if you don't like it, you will be under a wicked king. Huh. When David was sent, David was gifted. He has a tremendous ability. But I can tell you. David would have never become king if a wicked king did not give him the opportunity. He was able to kill lions and bear. Uh, what was it that? Bear. Bear. You know my French. Excuse my French. He was able to kill lions and bear, but he was not able to use the gift that he has. So what he did... He heard that in the, can you imagine, in the entire army, they were all afraid of one man, Goliath. But a boy was not afraid. The reason for is because before he started getting into ministry, he was serious in what he was doing. He was faithful in what he was doing, as small as he was. Nobody knew him. Even his own family put him aside. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he was faithful. You know, one time I tell to somebody, he said, he said, I'm looking for, for a church where they sing well. I said, ah, <laughs> you, have, you have given me problem this morning, brother. <laughs> and I told him, no, no, he said, I'm looking for a church where there is a choir who sings well. I said, ah. he said, he went everywhere in many churches and there are great preacher, but he did not find a great choir. I said, ah. Hmm, that's interesting. I said, but when you came here, did you see choir? <laughs> I said, by the time you were coming, you should have known that when you pass the door, you cannot find choir here. Because how many choir you we have here? 
choir, choir normally you have like 30 people at least because it's big choir, big choir. You, you were talking about big choir, not choir of a three, four, five people. Uh-uh. You were talking about a large choir. Mississippi choir. Mass choir. And who sings? Well. Well, you know, because God did not want him here, I can tell you that. That day, we sing the, 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 the worst possible ever. <laughs> I, I said, when, when, when somebody was opening his mouth to sing, Hallelujah! The brother and his wife, they pick up themselves, they left. <laughs> I say, I say, you see, you are seeking for yourself. So God, God also show you it's not your place. <laughs> but here's the thing. He is a minister of music. And I say, you see, you are missing your purpose. Like David, David was killed, but he needed a place for that skill to be elevated. Other than that, all your skill will go in the tomb with you. You, you have to understand kingdom principle. Somebody needs to sharpen you. At the stage of your life, God says, I will give you shepherd so they can feed you with knowledge and and he said, according my heart. Now you got to ask yourself, if I'm not well equipped, there is two reasons. The first is that you have chosen for yourself a preacher so it cannot work. <laughs> the second is that you stubborn. <laughs> That's the true reason. If you are acting like Judah with Christ, regardless the preaching Jesus did, Judah, he remained the same. Somebody will say, ah, he's a preacher, he's not preaching right. <laughs> but with Jesus Christ, Regardless of all the right preaching, Judah, he remained the same. The 70 disciples, they did what? They left him. So it is God who wants to perfect you so that uh, you can be equipped for the work of ministry. And in the day when it comes, like Paul, Paul was called. But when he was called, who called him? Is that a man? No. Who called Paul? Jesus Christ himself. He didn't call him in a dream, did he? He physically appeared to him and told him, today, I, you see, listen, some people, they need to repent in order for them to know God. For him, God said, I'm going to take you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? Some, some people, they need to make a move so God will do something for him. While he was fighting God, God said, okay, enough is enough. Pop! <laughs> there are some of you, regardless where you go, God will find you. Regardless what you do, he will find you. And because of you, it will cause the entire city to crumble. You will come out. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. You will come out. The, the city will spill you. Go. Your place is not here. Go fulfill your destiny. <laughs> so God has intentionally decided to equip you. But in order to do so, he needs somebody else to use to give you, to feed you. When you understand that principle, you willfully say, Lord, speak. Your servant, listen. 
When you don't understand principle, you like the Pharisee looking at Jesus. What, what, what is he saying? <laughs> People of God, you got to get the kingdom principle. The Pharisees that were the job, all they were doing, you were to scan every word Jesus was saying. And they were waiting for the error. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the disciples, they were sitting at the feet to receive in order to grow. You have received gift. You have received, the Bible says, the grace according to the measure of Christ. But when God moves you from one place to another, first thing that you ought to do is to present, see, when you come, when you travel, and then you have, I mean, I say when you travel and you take a passport and you travel in the airplane, not like when you jump on the barrier over there in the, <laughs> that's not that. But when you normally take the airplane to go in another country where you cannot accede, I mean, uh, uh, access through road, a boat, you 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 get in and at the check they say where's your passport? What does passport mean? Huh? Passport means yeah, it means your port to pass. You got to port your pass. See what I'm saying? So you got to put your key on you. If you forgot your passport home. And then you arrived at the check. That will tell you what. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Even if you are destined to enter, but you forgot your passport, they will not give you the entry, right? And now when they stamp your passport, he gives you access to the wealth of where you're going. Spiritual life is the same. There is a place where God will stamp your passport. That's why he gives you pastors. He gives you leaders. He gives you apostles. There is a only place where he will stamp your passport. Until you find that place, your passport will be empty. Eh, you go to the embassy, they say dinner. <laughs> you, that's why people say, I went in every church, but my problem is not fixed. Because you are not at the right place. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Nowadays, because of internet, which is good but which is unfortunate for many, is that internet has become the church for many people. They are sitting in the comfort of the house and they say, I will do church online. Can you imagine that? How do you do church, church, church online? With your towel on your on your on your waist, sitting with your sweet tea, and you, 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 like you, like it doesn't bother you. <laughs> People understand a key. The Lord Jesus Christ Himself had had to have people next to Him around Him, and yet His word can travel. Are you what I'm saying? He does not need to come physically for it to happen. But when you read the word of God, it was always physically present. Are you know what I'm saying? You cannot fellowship with your TV. You cannot fellowship with your phone. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, fellowship with your brethren. How do you fellowship with somebody? You cannot fellowship on the phone. Come on. You're, you see, tell, tell somebody, you know, principle. <laughs> Listen, let me put it this way. You, you, you have your passport, right? And then I say, your passport has to be stamped at the right place, right? Okay. You have your passport and you're on the phone and you call the, the, the airport. You say, I'm coming. They say, okay, we're waiting for you. Mm, I'm there. <laughs> I'm in spirit with you. You will enter not that place. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? Do not take internet as a substitute for the fellowship of the. Because to equip you 
God has to give you something. To equip you, God has to give you something. Somewhere. In some place. There is a sister. She told me, no, you know, I like big churches. I said, me too. But this is where God planted me. And then she said, but you know, I like when there is a vibrance. I said, if you like vibrance, it's not complicated. It's not difficult. Stand, vibrate yourself. And we have vibrance. It's not difficult. Here's the problem with us. When I came to the Lord, the Lord sent me in a church that was broke. The pastor was out of mind. I mean, I, myself, I asked to, I asked to go. I said, but, Lord, what, what's your problem? <laughs> I come to you. I'm looking to serve you. I'm looking to serve you correctly. And you send me in a place that is completely upside down. The guy is... So only Jesus knows. So everybody left the church eventually. His wife also left the church. And there was only my wife, me, and our daughter, she was about a few months old. So we go to church, we put her on the stroller, and we arrive. We place her, and we sit down. And then one day, he got on my nerve. <laughs> he entered under my skin. He was already making his way there, but that day he entered in. Because the preaching he was giving was completely new preaching, new age, completely outside of proportion. He was reading the Bible and saying something contrary to the Bible he was reading. I said, ah, even if you did not go to school and then you read, can you not know that what you're reading is not what you're saying? I became angry. And I stood. And I said, that's not right. You know what God did with me? The Lord slapped me. He did like Cora. He slapped me. And he said, never touch my anointed. I said, ah. He's mad. <laughs> what you don't understand is that it's not the person that makes the office. It's the office that makes the person. Are you what I'm saying? You can be great and strong. But until you enter the office... Of something, you are not that thing. That's why, even if you don't like the president, but because in the office, they call him president. Are you know what I'm saying? When he take a decree, that decree, even if you don't like it, the decree is taken. <laughs> are you know what I'm saying? So the Lord slapped me. And he says, be unto him like David was unto, uh, unto uh, Saul. From that day, I have submitted myself, but not with anger, willfully. Are you know what I'm saying? And people told me, but you're, you're crazy. You, you, you are the one who encouraged him to keep on doing wrong because you are still there. I say, you don't understand. It is kingdom covenant, kingdom principle, where God wants to take me, I must go right. I cannot be in a church, divide the church, and take... I was about to say the patient of the church. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I go to another church, and I say I'm a pastor. Church. No, no, no. This is sin. This is the Korah spirit. 
He, 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 he took some 250 of the people and then he gathered an assembly and he came against Moses. When he came against Moses, Aaron, Aaron was around. Aaron, the Bible said Aaron bent down to the ground. He said, ah, 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 they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what. Because prior that Aaron himself, he saw when he and his um, sister Miriam, they spoke against Moses, the Lord slapped them. So they felt it. And now they see their brother coming do the same thing. He said, ah, 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 Jesus, but don't forgive it because they don't know. So the Lord put me on warning. And after that, we left, we went to a place, a great place, great place, big church, and they had a big, a big choir, <laughs> and they sing very well. We enjoy it. And then the Lord told us now, separate. But it was in those place where God trained me. And when I asked him, why did he send me in the place that was completely corrupt? He said, so you will see how failure looked like. I remember my wife. She was going in a church like here, under the basement. <laughs> I say under the basement, not in the basement. <laughs> so he was down, down, down. <laughs> Hallelujah. But worse than that, that church was a French-speaking church. So now, now imagine, you are an American. You go in a French-speaking church. You don't understand French. What's, what's the point of it? Tell me. Because whatever they're teaching, you don't even know what they're talking about. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. So anyway, and one day she was fed up. She said, ah, I, I cannot continue to come here. So she just decided to go. I said, it is God who appoints you pastors. So she decided to go. And when she decided to leave, she went to another church. God went to, to find her there. She said, hey, go back. <laughs> <laughs> she said, but in that church, I feel like a burden. They, uh, they, don't, they don't talk to me because they don't understand English. When she finished to do like Moses, God said, go back to Pharaoh. <laughs> go back where, where you don't like it. <laughs> so she went back. A few times after, God brought me. Hallelujah. I, I, listen, when I walk in that church, that's why I say you need to take care of yourself. You cannot smell like a cockroach. <laughs> take care of yourself. I what I'm saying. Take care of yourself. Brush your teeth. Okay? Because when I entered that church, I put my, my what was the perfume? I think, I, I think the perfume was something from a, from a Paco Rabban. I put a perfume here, a perfume here. I put my base and I went to church. When I arrived, when I passed, <laughs> she heard the smell. <laughs> she was in worship. And then she, she heard this incense smell of God. And she said, oh Lord God, oh Jesus. Mm, it smells good. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> she has a hand worship, but her eye open to see what is that meat passing by. Hey, Jesus, let <laughs> But, mommy. I was just passing by you. <laughs> I was just doing my father's business. Hey, is she today? <laughs> you got to smell your blessing. Ah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you got to smell the place where God going to stamp your passport.
I was meditating when God gave me that message. That I'm preaching. And I said, wow. I never seen that like that myself. Even this morning before we come down, I sat my wife and I say, this is what God's saying. And I say, I'm giving you just a little nugget from what I'm going to preach because myself, I do not even know it. He pierced me when the Lord says, it is me who give you pastors, leaders, shepherd, according to my own heart to feed you. Now I understand why the Lord Jesus says to Peter, feed my Listen, let me give you an example. When you have the spirit of God, you don't criticize. You discern and you bring the solution. When you have the spirit of the devil, you criticize, but you don't bring solution. Are you know what I'm saying? And the difference between the, the spirit of discernment and crit, crit, criticism is that the spirit of discernment helps you know what's wrong and then shows you how to bring the fix. Are you know what I'm saying? That's why I say that when I see those men of God doing certain things that are completely out of proportion, first thing I learned is, Lord, tell me, speak to me, show me. Because the place where God wanted me to have my passport stamped, I must make sure that it is stamped. You are being equipped for your own ministry. I you know what I'm saying? But if in what God gives you as little, you are not serious about it. You know, by the grace of the Lord, we have there is there is a sister in a, in a, in London. She greatly value me. She value me so much that I don't like to talk to her. Because by the time I talk to her, hey, great man of God, I say please. <laughs> she value me too much. But she never knew that I had a church in the basement. She saw my church like. At 35 different parkings. <laughs> and then one day, she was following one of our, um, I think Friday or Wednesday, Wednesday teaching. In the Wednesday teaching, we put the camera over there. And then she said, wow. Oh. All this power coming out of you, all this knowledge, all this wisdom that you have fed me with, all this thing, the way you built me. Like, like the, the, the day she found me, it was in a simple way. God showed me a helper. And then she became very renowned, she, I mean established. But she never knew what was my background. I'm talking about the place of worship. She always imagined it. By the day she saw it, she was, she was flabbergasted. She said, whoa. So he, he, she said, God, going to elevate you so greatly, man of God. I said, please, leave me here. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that if God has to show you how your blessing look like, many of you will say no. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord will never and always show you blessings just polish. Are you what I'm saying? Gold is found where? In the, in the ground, in the dirt. Gold does not come out all polished and say, here I am. <laughs> Are you what I'm saying? But as you're digging, you got to get dirty. 
That's why you don't dig with your suit on. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You got to have the proper attire. But when you find the gold, even if you have dirt yourself, dusted yourself, when you find that gold, you know you found something. That place where you found it, if you are smart or wise, you will be seeking in the same place. <laughs> because if you find gold somewhere, it means around, there is possibility there is more gold. Dig there! Dig there until! But if you don't, and then you do what I call, I call it, um, how do I call it? You know Kwashoko? I would call it in English. Kwashoko. When you have spiritual kwashoko, you are going everywhere. You feel what I'm saying? Please uh, follow, follow, please. When you have spiritual kwashoko, you go everywhere. But you are not satisfied. That's, that's, how, that's how the Bible says that you have itching here. You just scratch you. You go, you, you look, you, you. But, when Christ finds you and you find Christ, the place where he wants you to be, the Bible says that he feeds you with what? Knowledge and for your own ministry. That's why one time I was speaking with the mama Elise and then she told me. She said, This is my church. I said, ah, praise God. And one day I was here. We usually go pick her up. But that day I was here, and suddenly she appeared like an angel. I said, ah, you have a car now? <laughs> she said, no. I said, but ah, how did you come here? She said, I walk. I said, hey. Although she's fresh, but she's of age. She walked from her house to come in the presence of God. These things like that, is Africa you see that? I, I, even I'm saying, I, I, do you realize that in America they make you become like a, like cold. Your love for Christ becomes cold. Pay attention. Don't let yourself be distracted. Pay attention. They work you in. They press you in. So you become cold. And they say, sit down. Watch your night. <laughs> Pay attention. The day they wanted to break your life, they call it COVID. And they made everything possible to close the churches. Are you what I'm saying? And they opened what? The liquor store. They say go. They say go drink. <laughs> go be ha. Feed your lust and make sure you step out from church. You have to pay attention so that you become not the result of the plans of the enemy. When I was in Africa. We go to church. We know we go to church. Why? Because that day, we sit until it is finished. In America, the guy arrive. Uh, it is about uh, 12 30. Yeah. You have been preaching for 25 minutes. Um, I think I'm done. Bye bye, friends. They call it fast food church. When you enter in, announcement, tight, one song, two song, and then the pastor has his preaching, and then he has the watch, and he has to make sure that he doesn't pass over 30 minutes. And then there is somebody sitting over there. When the pastor starts now passing over a certain time, they start showing him, Pastor. 
you're passing the time. There is a there is a mummy that you met with her, who told her who come from Cameroon, who told her, listen, you African church people, you are you are doing church too much. Be like an American, like white people, and 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 and, 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 and ow. She said, do, do like they, they understand it's money, money. I say hi. Hey. She said, she said, we we all know that church is about money, money. So just do and then you have more money, money. And then ow. Oh, just go quick message. 30 minutes is enough. I said, hey. And she said, if you do your church like that, I will come. I said, stay where you are. <laughs> stay where you are. <laughs> stay where you are. Thank you. Keep your trouble where you are. <laughs> People of God, you are equipped by God for the ministry for which he called you. But you cannot equip yourself or understand that. So God said he gave us apostles, prophets, evangelists, Pastors, teachers, for our equipping. So when you read this and then you don't understand that, you do church your way. You do ministry your way. You do the work of God your way. Apollos. He was a great man of God, but he had some teaching that were not perfected. And Aquila and Priscilla were sitting at the same synagogue and they were hearing him. So when they heard him preaching about the Baptist of John the Baptist, the Bible said they brought him and then they helped him accurately more in the work of God. That's the spirit of God. That's why I personally make sure that I keep my hearing to only one path. I said one time, and that day, as I was talking, we, were, we haven't even started the life. We were talking just among us. And that same day, I think, is when Brother James arrived, right? Brother James. That day he arrived, and he came, and I said, ah, why, why did you come here? He said, listen, he has been doing church online since 2020. But he saw that he cannot continue to do online because it is not real fellowship. I was amazed. I was, I was surprisingly amazed. Because that same day we were talking about it without knowing that God was even bringing somebody. So he came and then he said that and I was amazed. And I said, but why so? He said, because I need the fellowship of the brethren. I was greatly Amazed. He gave his life just a few time ago, but he was ready to go with the Lord. How much are you ready to be equipped? God can speak to you, but somebody can show you how to receive the continuality of that revelation. Talk about Samuel. God was speaking to Samuel, was calling Samuel. But he had to have who? Prophet Eli. To know exactly how he has to position himself to keep on receiving what God was already starting to say. But three times he was hearing, but he did not go deeper. Are you know what I'm saying? So when I was meditating this week, it was just, I think, two or three days ago. And the Lord gave me that message. Myself, I was pierced. I was like, whoa. I said, Lord, I never seen it this way. I never seen it this way. And then he told me, being faithful in the little things is to be willing to keep on improving. That's what it means. But if you don't take 
what is little seriously because you think it's just common. You will not improve. The day the Lord blessed me with keyboard playing, my wife is here. We had a brother that will stand together here. I will be on the keyboard and I will hit one key with one finger and I will look for the other key. And I would tell them, keep singing. <laughs> and they were tired singing because they did not know what, 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 what I was doing. <laughs> so me, myself, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was, I was trying to play, but I could not. And one day, suddenly, the Spirit took my fingers. And I started playing keyboard as if I learned it. And yet I didn't. But if I was waiting, if I was not committed, the gift that is in you wouldn't have been stirred up. For Paul says, stir up the gift that is within you. How and where do you stir up? You have to find a place. You got to be in a marmite. Ah, you know marmite? Like, how is it that? The pot. Because when you put food in a pot to cook, you stir up, you, stir up, you have to be inside. So you have to be in a place where you are contained. So your gift will be stirred up. So when the Lord spoke to me, I said, wow. And the next day, Pastor Martin called me. He said, ah. There is people coming. I say, oh, Lord, so you have given a message for who? Me or them? <laughs> he said, ah, there are people coming. So I was thinking to myself, I said, Lord, when the people come here, what do you have for them? For many people came in this very place. And many people were blessed. And many people passed through. So I asked the Lord, but what was the purpose? He said, at the moment of time, he will use you as a sharpener. Are you what I'm saying? He will use you as a sharpener. You will help somebody be able to fulfill his ministry. A leader does not keep the child at home. Are you what I'm saying? If the child stays, he will stay until the stature he gets so he can build. That's why in every ministry, regardless of the number, whether they are 3,000 or 4,000, there is always a team of few. So I'm inviting you to be serious. To be serious. If you know that today we're going to do this, remember it is unto the Lord that you're doing so. Be serious. Because the day the law says your passport has been stamped, you will step in the territory of all the blessings that you've been waiting for. Are you what I'm saying? Do not settle for the manna. It is not meant to elevate you. It is meant to sustain you until you arrive. Don't confuse your manna and your miracle. Your, I mean your manna and your promise. When God promised them, he didn't promise them manna, did he? But when they saw the manna, they settled. There is a place you will not... F Tell somebody in Revelation. Um, However you worship, you will never find the milk and the honey until you have found the right place. Am I right? Yeah. They were in the wilderness with the presence of God, with the fire, with what? The, 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 the cloud. But they were not having the milk and the... But wasn't that God with them? 
So why? He, he did all kind of miracles. The quails. He did the, 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 the how call it? The stone who gave the watch. He did all kind of miracles, but they did not have the promise. Until you understand that kingdom principle that I am at the right place. Where God sent me. Where God appointed me in. It will be difficult. For proof, some of the children of Israel, when they were going, they saw some of the green pasture before the promise. When they saw the green pasture, they said, ah, we're going to settle here. They missed the promise. Are you what I'm saying? How much are you willing to, uh, um, to, to lose simply because you are not seeing what God and where he's sending you? And this message, this revelation that God is giving me is for me. If it is for you, you got to take it yourself. Hallelujah. He has spoken to me. Sometimes I'm tired. Extremely tired. You have no idea how many things I do. Huh? Only my wife knows. My wife and God. <laughs> you have no idea. I'm, I'm called from everywhere. Everybody wants to eat that fruit. Asia, Australia, Europe, America, Africa, from everywhere. Sometimes I'm so tired that I'm trying to sleep and there's a call coming. Oh, man of God, I see Jesus help me. No, man of God, no more. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more. <laughs> and I see the people who are feeding the knowledge and the understanding that God is releasing. I see them growing. And myself, I'm amazed. And then I say, Lord, what about my place? If you take the anointing and you sleep with that, it won't work for you. Are you know what I'm saying? You are anointed for purpose. You are not anointed to sleep and to sit down. You are anointed. The Bible says that, that he gave us what? Gift and grace to how many? If you don't know what you ought to do in the house of God, ask the leader or ask God. Either way, God is going to speak. But do not stay without stirring up the gift that is within you. God chose you even before he appointed you somebody. You know what I'm saying? So you will be equipped. You will be equipped. And I pray that from today on, starting by myself, that each one of us will understand those of you watching, specifically those of you watching, find a place where you will worship. You cannot, you know, we appreciate you be online, but you are not part of us. Find a place where God will give you, not a place where you will give to yourself, but a place where God will give you shepherd and leaders to feed you knowledge and understanding so you can be equipped to equip others.
Be faithful somewhere. If you are not faithful in the things of God, you cannot be faithful to your spouse. It's not possible. If you are not faithful in the things of God, the Bible says that the man of God has to start where? In his Whosoever is, I say, if you are not faithful in the things of God, you cannot be faithful in your house. Because the one who said that is Jesus Christ. Your house is a little things. If this one, you cannot be faithful there. Forget about it. You, you are an uh, usurpateur. No, no, usurpateur. No, no, usurpateur. Usurpateur. No, you're so many uh, French English here, and then you, you're uh, usurpateur. Yeah, S somebody. Yeah, somebody who pretending say being somebody, but he's not. Huh? And pastor, thank you. And pastor. Somebody say, you come to church and you pray and you don't have a life of prayer. Your heart is not close to God. All you have is a just, you are an pastor. That's why it is important to be serious about the things of God. Where? Starting in your life. Your house. And the church. If you serve God in the church and not in your house, you are an imposter. For the word of God, if, say, if you love your neighbor, you see. Uh, sorry, you, you love God, you don't see. And you don't love your neighbor, you see, you are an imposter. How much are you ready to receive from God? Now I'm going to finish with this. Where you want to arrive, God has already written your name on it. Are you what I'm saying? Where you want to arrive, nobody will take it. He will wait until you get there. You must find the right place to have the passport so you enter. You cannot be going circle. Say, I refuse to go in circle. The last people who did go in circle were the children of Israel in wilderness. I refuse to go in that circle. What God wants you to do is not to go in circle. It's to surround the place to take it down. Jericho. Because you know where you're going. So when it gives you the power, it gives you the authority. And the stamp is saying, surround it until you take it down. So you cannot go in circle without going nowhere. Are you what I'm saying? You got to refuse. You got to be the produce of somebody else. Meaning, the spirit of God has to elevate you greater than somebody else. But you have to learn to submit. You have to learn to yield. Are you know what I'm saying? You have to learn to give. You have to learn to, to open. And the last thing I want to say. If you are your own counselor, you are set for failure. An imposter is own counselor because he devised mischief. Let's take the last verse and then we're going to close. 
Book of Proverbs, um, Lord, remind me. Um, Lord, it says, in the multitude of counselor, is in the book of Proverbs. Hallelujah. Find that for me and put it on the screen, please. Which, which verse? Uh, which chapter? Hallelujah. Sometimes people flip things. They say, oh, you have to have... Uh, uh, huh? Proverbs 11. Okay, go ahead, put it on the screen. Sometimes they mixed up things. They flip the things. But... It's better to listen what God says than to listen what men says. Put it on the screen for us. Where where no counsel is, the people fall. Who, who fail. Fall, fail. Fall. 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 Who say that? Who's speaking? God. Give me in uh, amplify. Uh huh. Where there is no wise, intelligent guidance. Do you, you, you know how you recognize something that is wise and intelligent? You know how you do that? By comparing it to other. Because if you are your own counsel, I tell you, you're going to fail miserably. There is a way that seems right unto men. By the end of it is... Destruction, death. So you look at what you're doing and you say, yes, it is right. But if you don't compare it in order, you don't expose it, you, you don't uh, uh, pull it out so that the people can give you a feedback. Even businesses understand that. Even in businesses, they understand that they have to have feedback from customers. So sometimes they have, they, they have angry feedback. They, they, they take it and they improve. You cannot be your own counselor. Where there is no wise, intelligent guidance, the people fall and go off course like a ship without a helm. Hallelujah. Amen. Where you started, because you have not taken sound, and I will say godly counsel, you go, 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 go. And somebody defrauded you. And you say, ah, ah, they defrauded me. No. It's the result of your seed. You know what I'm saying? For God says, if God does not build, it is in vain that the builder are building. You are doing, doing doing but you are your own counselor and at the end of the day when he crumble you say lord god i have served you you did not serve me you have um but but in the in the abundance of wise and godly counselors there is victory this is a principle for success if anything you do in your life that has to do with the finances Anything you do in your life that has to do with uh, uh, work, with um, um, a business, whatever, Ex ministry, expose it among the godly counsel. Simple principle of the word of God for you to be built up, equipped, and succeed. You cannot follow. But, uh, I hear what I'm saying. If you are praying for God to show you something, listen carefully, people of God. God can decide to show you something himself, meaning he can come and speak to you because he does so. If he decided to speak to you in dream, he will also do so. If he decided to speak to you through somebody else and you discarded, you must know you have discarded your future. Are you what I'm saying? 
You should not leave. You should not be deceived to think that you are enough by yourself. Jesus Christ was not enough by himself. He learned to subdue himself, uh, submit himself, even though he was greater. He learned to submit himself unto John the Baptist. Before Christ started ministry, John the Baptist presented him. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, before he started ministry, he had to be John the Baptist who presented him. I pray. Hallelujah. Put it for me, Pastor Martin. I pray that you will not let yourself be corrupted by various understanding. But you will let yourself be built by the word of Christ. There are times when you may think that all you need to do is keep on pressing. But if you keep on pressing the wrong way, you will have the wrong result. You need to know where you keep on pressing. And you need to make sure that you keep on pressing the right place. If you want oil, but you put mango in a pressure machine, you will not have oil. You need to put the right thing at the right place with the right pressure to provide the oil. You want anointing, but you don't value the anointing of somebody else. You want the Spirit of God, but you don't value the things of God. You want result, but you don't value counsel. You want God to lift you up, but you are not lifting up the work of God. You want God to elevate you, but you are not elevating the word of God. You want God to bless you, but you don't bless nobody. Change your views and your ways. Change. The Lord says he gives you so that you can be fed with knowledge and understanding. Without knowledge you perish, but without understanding you fail. So the Lord wants you to have both of them. Knowledge and understanding. Understand how to apply the knowledge that you have received. So he's building us. He's building me. He's building you. Shaping you into the model that he has designed with your name on it. Let me tell you this. There is no blessing that anyone will take away from you except who? Yourself. Even the devil cannot. The devil can only deceive you to give it away. Are you willfully willing to see God change the trajectory of your story? Are you willfully willing to see God change the trajectory of your story? You will need to take steps into what he says. For there is a light in his word that will enlighten the path that you're taking. You cannot arrive if the path you're taking is dark. And there is no wisdom in the world, in philosophy, that will help you achieve and arrive where God has assigned you. There is none. 
You must find it in his word. Everything that you invest in the work of God. Everything that you put in the work of God as he appoints you. You are extending the life of your blessing. Are you, are you following? If the life of your blessing was supposed to be at level 10. And you are level 1. You may think that. I just have enough. I will just keep going. But if you understand to correctly plant the one you have here, you're going to extend the life to 11. And it will multiply to 110. For a seed does not grow up one seed. A seed does not grow up one fruit. A seed multiplies. The word of God says that he gave you every fruit that have his seed inside. What it means? You don't eat the fruit and the seed. If things are not happening, it's because you are eating the fruit and the seed. You have to learn to plant the portion that is seed to replicate fruits. But for it to happen, you have to find the land where you plant it and where you are equipped to harvest. Are you following what I'm saying? Say, Lord, equip me to harvest. Equip me to plant. Equip me to harvest. There is a place where God will plant you so you grow. And as you grow, you will arrive at the stature that God and the measure of grace that he has appointed will be filled inside of you. And out of you, it says, will come out the living waters. Somebody need to feed out of you. Somebody need to drink out of you. So you need to be refilled by the water of Christ. You need to be refilled by the water of Christ so that continually, continually, you will give without being dry. You will give without being dry. God shall replenish you. For he says, he is the one who gives seed to the sower to sow. He's the one who enrich you. He's the one who brings in the blessings. And he had no sorrow with it. When your job, when your business, when your marriage, when your children, when anything in this life is preventing you to worship Christ, Make sure to know that you are making an idol out of it. Are you what I'm saying? I pray that the mercies of God, that the same grace by which he has established you, the same grace by which he had called you to the ministry he has called you to the work of the ministry. He has called you to equip you. He has called you so that you can become efficient. I pray that the sword of the Lord cut out of you every heaviness. Every burden that is holding you back. I pray 
that the sword of the Lord will cut off you. Every shackles that is preventing you to advance where God says, I want you to be. The place that God has inscribed your name on it reclaims and claims that you be there. You must be there. You must be there. Every plan that the enemy has purpose of your life on your life. In the name of Jesus, I reverse them, cancel them, break them from the root in the name of Jesus Christ. For it is the Lord who appointed you. It is the Lord who called you first. It is the Lord who loved you first. It is the Lord who shall promote you. There is no and nothing that you will have from anyone except God has ordained it. I pray that from today on, those hidden destiny helpers who have been waiting to come your way, I pray that they arrive now. I pray that they arrive now. That they manifest tangibly. That they manifest tangibly. That they manifest tangibly. And that you be granted in the name of Jesus the key to access every door, to access every lock, a master key to open, to enter, to possess, to overtake in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Christ.